getting way more fun. And this place is a madhouse. Give me strength. <laughs> the things they can do. Hello from the return of The Full Monty 25 years later as a TV show to the sixth series of Black Mirror. Today we're looking at what to watch on TV this June and our critic Deep Dicker Laurent is here. We're starting with a show that's getting people talking, The Idol, starring pop star The Weeknd and Lily Rose Depp. That's right. It's finally out, you might say, Eve. The Idol feel, uh, features Lily Rose Depp as Jocelyn, who's his troubled pop star trying to rehabilitate her image, uh, who and ends up and winds up falling under the spell of this cult leader and producer played by uh, Abel Tesfe, also known as the singer uh, The Weeknd. Well, let's take a look at The Idol. I think I just fell in love with you. What does that mean he's taken over the house? He's brainwashed her. Hmm? <laughs> Not a human being. <laughs> You're a star. Never trust a dude with a rat tail. So Eve, the series was dogged by production problems, a change in showrunner, also a sort of a toxic shoot, perhaps, or at least uh, rumors of a toxic shoot. The Idol, prem the first few episodes of The Idol premiered last month at the Cannes Film Festival, and, and there the cast were keen to play down any hint of discord or controversy uh, about creators Sam Levinson and The Weeknd. Take a look. The process on the set was unbelievably creative. I must go on record as saying this. Yeah. To, to call it chaotic or dysfunctional would be like, uh, you know, going onto the set of Curb Your Enthusiasm or a J Judd Apatow movie where people are improvising brilliantly and saying, oh, well, they must not know the lines. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. <laughs> the uh, occasional bareness of the character physically mirrors the, 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 the bareness that we get to see emotionally in her. Um, and that was something that I felt was really important to the character. And when it comes to all of that stuff, you know, uh, I've never felt more involved in those kinds of conversations. And the show has been um, criticised for its graphic sexual content, which many say is unnecessary. Well, you do wonder what the point is of all that sex uh, in the show. The, <laughs> the vision from the original showrunner was a very, very, very much a female gaze, but when Dream. Sam Levinson and The Weeknd uh, took over, it, it feels Rats very much like a lecherous male gaze. At times, it feels like a male rape fantasy. There are, you know, ch a choking masturbation scene. There's a violent sex between Justin. characters. Uh, and Lily Rose Depp's character, pretty much, she says occasional, but she is pretty much always half naked around uh, people who are always clothed. It feels deeply uncomfortable to watch. Well, it sounds horrible. <laughs> um, what do you think then? Well, the jury's out on this one. Uh, either it is a black satire of the music industry, its sexualization of female pop stars, its exploitation of mental of their mental uh, mental illness. In which case, it's brilliant. Uh, or it's porno trash with a half baked plot, mediocre writing, and boring sex. Um, my guess is it's a, trying to be a bit of both, but it feels like it's more the latter. I'm sorry to say. Um, initially, in my you know nepo baby skepticism, I thought that'd be the worst thing about this show. But she's very good. She adds depth to her character she brings emotion and her story is the most interesting you know this sort of story of codependence that she doesn't exist with without her entourage of producers and assistants and managers and inversely they don't exist without her and, and I think that's the most interesting thing. Okay, well, next, um, you remember the hit film. Um, in 1997, the Four Monty won BAFTAs and Oscar and People's Hearts um, with this uplifting tale of six men putting together a striptease. Um, now there's a sequel in the form of a TV series on Disney+. Plus. That's right. The TV series is set 25 years after the film. It depicts the devastating impact of uh, the Sheffield's de-industrialisation. It features um, most of the original cast, including BAFTA winner Robert Carlyle. Well, it does certainly seem a lot less cheerful than the film. Let's take a look at the full Monty. Everyone has their ups and downs, right? When was the last stop? It's about destiny. She's doing all right. Like you know. Somebody's got to look out for it. Who the hell are you to give out parenting advice, eh? You don't even have any kids. What about you? What are you proud of in your life? He ain't got two pennies to rub together, has he? I just hope for your sake you don't wake up one day and realise what you've missed. Do you suffer from anxiety? Probably will do now. 
Now, there are a lot of social and political problems in the UK um, relating to the cost of living, relating to immigration. Uh, are those issues reflected in the show? Yeah, absolutely. This is very much a political show, Eve. Uh, it's scathing in its condemnation of bad policy making, 25 years of bad policy making that's led to this disenfranchising of British communities. It's embodied, for instance, in the fact that the club that hosted the film's striptease is now shut down. Uh, bus services have been stripped down. Food banks are commonplace. And also, it's embodied in the character of Horse, who uh, rides a mobility scooter and uh, he's forced to fight bureaucracy when his disability benefits are cut. So it's very relevant to Britain's crippling cost of living crisis. Well, it certainly sounds um, heavy. What did you think? Um, look, uh, the characters are uh, still charming as ever. You know, it has that British charm to it. Uh, but I felt conflicted about this show. On one hand, the political message uh, about disenfranchisement is, is really important. I get it. Um, but at the same time, they hit that political message so hard that the show ends up being joyless, contrived and draining, especially since there is no striptease element, which is what made the, the film so quirky and fun in the first place. OK, so no striptease element in the full <laughs> movie. Um, well, fan favourite Black Mirror is back for a sixth season this month on Netflix with a stellar cast to boot after a long absence. Yeah, that long absence due to production issues and, of course, uh, that uh, little thing called the pandemic <laughs> that uh, occurred in between. Uh, in an interview with Radio Times back in 2020, uh, Black Mirror creator Charlie Brooker admitted that he didn't want to write uh, season six during the pandemic uh, because he didn't think society could... Could stomach such depressing material at the time, uh, but a few years later, it said it's the right time now for season six, which features five uh, film-length episodes. Uh, these stories that feature, as you said, a, a stellar cast, a host of stars like uh, Salma Hayek, Josh Hartnett, and Breaking Bad's Aaron Paul. Well, um, let's preview three of the stories from season six of um, Black Mirror on Netflix. How's the coffee? Dog shit. I did not say that like that. This is an adaptation of Joan's life. Can everybody that has Streamberry watch this? Hey, how are you doing out there? Cool. Fuck! This guy had been abducting people. So that's what your documentary's about. The details are so awful, it is irresistible. <gasps> I love it. Two years down on the mission, the man is lost. both feel that you could use a break. I think I'd like that very much. You know, Eva, Brooker has a brilliant mind. The first two episodes troll Netflix, i.e. The, the hand that feeds Black Mirror. Um, and there's a lot of meta referencing. Um, but I do find this season a little shaky. Uh, many of the issues predicted are, are sort of already happening in a way, you know, uh, shows that are based on your life, like the first episode are. Uh, it's kind of like what Netflix does with their suggestions based on, on what you're watching. Um, the second episode looks at the cost of uh, our obsession with true crime. That doesn't feel particularly new either. It's not to say it's not worth watching. I mean, Black Mirror is always um, great. It's got plenty of bittersweet endings and morally questionable characters. But I think it works best when it, it's hard-hitting. It takes a human trait to a very dark place. Like, think of the pilot episode, the one with the prime ministers and the pig. Um, or my favorite, which is the entire history of you about lovers' ability to scan their own memories. Um, to solve arguments about who did what in the past. Like, that was <laughs> that was such a good episode, and I think this season lacks that kind of episode that sticks with you for a long time. There's certainly a lot going on in June. Narrowing down and the picks of the month wasn't an easy task for you. Tell us about two other shows to look out for. Well, you know, these months might be some of the last good months for a while because the, the, writers, the ongoing writer's strike has also halted lots of fall productions, at least when it comes to Hollywood productions. Uh, so uh, this month you have critically acclaimed The Bear, that is... Uh, back for an anticipated second season. This series follows Carmi, who's played by Jeremy Allen White, a talented chef working at a pre prestigious restaurant who takes over his family sandwich shop after his brother dies. The first season took TV, storm, uh, TV fans by storm that was hailed as this realistic, gritty, unromanticized look at the world of hospitality. Season two picks up with a different restaurant by the same cast, hopefully fleshing out more of those different character stories. It's already getting a lot of positive early reviews. Well, lastly, to a show called Bloodhounds, a David meets um, Goliath-type Korean drama, which is out on Netflix. Yeah, it's an excellent crime thriller uh, from director Jason Kim. It's sort of uh, a 
think of it as bromance meets boxing. It's set during the pandemic, um, uh, and economic woes form the basis of the series show of the series premise. Uh, two young boxers pair up to fight loan shark thugs who are terrorizing uh, local business owners after forcing them to take out uh, shady loans uh, during the pandemic. Uh, this show has great chemistry between the two boxers. One who's sort of a bit of a hothead, the other one who's shy and self-effacing, and their characters very much reflected in um, their boxing styles. This, this series has really impressively choreographed fight scenes. Um, and above all, it's very, it's a deeply satisfying show, you know, like the good guys are kind and the bad guys are so irredeemably nasty that you have to root wholeheartedly for the good guys. So it's this, it feels very satisfying that there is this distinction between good and bad. Okay. Thank you so much telling us the shows to watch and possibly to avoid, for me anyway. Um, we're going to leave you with a peek at Bloodhounds, the slick new Korean drama out on Netflix this month. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Go get it. 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 Go get it.